The third and the last game, the best of three. Dimaga starting to the bottom of the Polar Knight. And we have to the top Yoda, our Terran player in red. And the score is, of course, it being a third game, 1-1. One one. Dimaga victorious in game number one. Had to succumb to Yoda's strength in game number two, especially to the multitasking that the Terran player showcased there. It was pretty incredible to watch Yoda just drop three different positions on the map and attack with his main army at the same time. Really good job, well done by Yoda here. And I have to say, in the last game, Yoda just was the better player. Dimaga dominating game number one, but now it's the third game, and for one of them, it will put an end to the hopes of qualifying for the first season of WCS Europe, since this is the last chance for both of them. It is the last qualifier, it is the wildcard qualifier, and the Maga, he has a shot, as does Yoda. This is the last map for both of them in this best of three, so let's see who will be able to take the game and advance to the next round of the tournament. So. I said earlier before we started the game that Polar Knight might work in favor of Dimaga because it's a smaller map and I still feel that is a little bit true because I personally think that one of the biggest problems that he had was just the map was too big. The bases were spread out too far and that was something that Yoda really used to his advantage with uh, what he chose there to do. So a little bit tricky for Dimaga to really keep up with Yoda and on a smaller map like this where it's going to be a little bit easier for him to really defend his bases it might be better for Dimaga to go up against the Terran player here. Because he definitely has the skills that he needs to make that work. I mean, I think that's is absolutely out of the question. The problem is just, can he really pull it off right now and keep it together? Because Yoda is a super tough opponent to face, and that is something that Dimaga is absolutely aware of. So, it's going to be a very hard game, either way. I mean, that's absolutely out of the question there. Yoda is just an incredible player and he has shown that several times in offline tournaments and of course also online. So going up against him, having him in your bracket is something where you are not too happy and facing him in the first round basically. I guess technically it's round number two but for Dimaga it's the first best of three that he plays today is not an easy feat. So the Terran player going up into a Reaper build once again, wants to find out what's happening. At the bottom of the map we have Dimaga going into his standard build that we've seen in the last two games, going for the hatch first into pool, most likely going to start with four queens again before he heads into gas. But what we have for Yoda here is also the immediate switch into a command center and then the reactor being built at the barracks. So very, very normal opening. It's a go-to build in this matchup for most Terran players and the Reaper in the main base maybe even able to get a kill not quite doesn't really get the kill off but is at least able to uh, yeah to chase one drone away for a little bit and once again if you're watching the VODs on uh, the YouTube channel right now and you're wondering what these small lag spikes are these games are being played live at the WCS European qualifier and broadcast so this is a broadcast recording and the uh, small lags happen through uh, Battle.net of course with one Korean player also being uh, uh, yeah, playing here in the match. Uh, he will have a few lag spikes every now and then and this is something that we are experiencing as observer too. This actually goes to an extreme where we have players like Freya that played in yesterday's qualifier really being counted uh, out in one of the games so dropping in the countdown. That's something that we might see later on. Freya is also participating in this uh, tournament today and he played a really incredible qualifier number three for Europe so he didn't qualify in the end. Lost against two German players against Lambo and against Hero Marine, but maybe today is the day where he can make it happen. We're gonna find out later on, I guess. But for now, we are focusing, of course, at the Terran versus Zerg at hand. So, looking to the top right, we have now the uh, third uh, base started for Yoda. Once again, heading into that command center. And this is the style that he also showcased in the first best of three of the day. The only time where he really completely deviated from it was on Habitation Station where he decided to go into a mech build instead, which also influenced his opening quite a bit, starting things off with Banshee play instead of going into that third early CC. So this time he's gonna stick it out with his guns with what he's used to. Third base is already on the way for the Marga. And with the extra queens that he has, he's of course spreading creep once again. So let's see how that's going to work out for the Maga this time. If he can make that happen. 
The double evolution chamber has been started. A couple of like the Zerglings just patrolling over here for a simple reason. If that Reaper jumps up into the main base again, you want to have a few units there to welcome him, give him a warm welcome, and uh, kill him immediately. The hatch to the left side has been found, and even though it's pretty tricky for the Hellions to take it down, you need to send units over there. You cannot just simply look at it and let the hatch finish, because then it will be down like maybe 400 hit points, and you will lose it eventually. So the Queens are there to the rescue, and with the extra energy that they have, they can then also go for a transfuse if need be. But Yoda doesn't really commit to that. He just wants to uh, keep the Maga busy, he wants to kill a couple of creep tumors if he can, and open up the path in the main base, and that's what he did with that attack at the left side. Suddenly, in the natural, we have the Hellions, and this is a horrible start for the Maga here. Oh my god, he's sliding them up, and he's losing way too much here. The Hellions are still alive, and this is a massacre. He lost way too many drones already, and that was a really smart move by Yoda here. He killed 16 harvesters just now. He attacked the third base and lured the queens over here, and then he just went around the edge and moved in at the natural right there. No queens for the block in this small gap. Took down 16 harvesters, and that was a big, big win for Yoda. In terms of resources lost, there's not a whole lot of difference. So Yoda lost, if you think about it, his presence on the map with the help but he shut down the economy of the Maga pretty hard. It's still 45 against 44 harvesters, but that's a pretty bad situation for a Zerg on three bases to be in. So he needs to drone up quite heavily again. That costs him lava, it costs him money, and at the same time, of course, he's losing the income that he would have had if those drones would have mind the entire time. So a very annoying situation for the Maga to start the game like this. We have on the other hand him with 1-1 one, one upgrades, a Baneling speed and a lot of Zerglings and he, I guess he could go for a big Baneling bust. We've seen that occasionally. We have four Overseers now being built. Not quite sure what you want to do with four Overseers. Maybe go for Contaminate. That's one of the only reasons that I can come up with. The speed upgrade for the uh, for the speed upgrade for the overlords is now being built, but what is he going to do with four overseers? Like, I'm a little bit baffled here, to be absolutely honest with you. I do not know what he's trying to do. I thought for a second that he might just wait and go in for Contaminate later on, as soon as he has the energy. That could be the reason. Trying to delay the upgrades of his opponent maybe a little bit, but it's a, it's a tiny, tiny bit weird. Lings are everywhere right now. Upgrades are 1-1 one, one, and that is killing a lot of the Marines. With all those circlings, we will see the Baneling aggression and there it is. There is no siege tank. We have two Widow Mines building. That's all that he has. He has to bust through there. 1-1 one, one is done for the Terran player just in time. Here come the Overseers. Can he go for the Contaminate right now? Doesn't really look like it. Not just yet. He's waiting a little bit longer. The Banelings are on the move. Where are those Widow Mines? They are not there just yet. Banelings bust through. Here come the Zerglings, Widow Mines are done, they are moving in, and at the same time the Overseers are coming into play. They move in, and what are they going to do? They're soaking up the damage, they're soaking up the Widow Mine shots. All of them already soaked up, Demaga is currently supply blocked, losing those Overseers, but he's doing a lot of damage. Nice usage on the other hand from Yoda, making sure that these small gaps work in his favor, building a lot of structures just to narrow those pathways for the Zerg player down. Demaga doing the damage, but does he do enough? Yeah, workers killed 12 so far. The overall supply for Yoda is down at 69. He's on three bases on the other hand. And did the Maga kill enough? That's the big question. He lost 4,400 resources and has, uh, on the other hand, taken out uh, 3,900 of his opponent. Denies this third base for a little bit longer. Straight tech into infestation pit right now for him at the third base of all things. Trying to hide that a little bit. 2-2 two, two is not done just yet, but that will give him an edge. If he gets the 2-2 two, two upgrades, that's going to be great for him. Overseers here still to soak up damage and now we have the Contaminate trying to delay those upgrades a little bit. That will be great for him. The upgrade advantage is there. Can he make it count though? That's the big question. He might not really go straight for another attack here. I think it would be a little bit suicidal to try that again, but at the same time the 2-2 upgrades will give him the time that he needs to just get his additional attack out and that means right now Hive Tech. Hive Tech and getting the fourth base that he's trying to access right now with all those links going to kill the ice box here. So Dimaga is finding himself in a position where he's taking a good economy, 
He has an upgrade lead. He has a position in the game where he has a lot of gas because he was playing a very low gas game, only getting a couple of uh, banelings into the picture. But we see him going up against drops now, and that was without mutalisks. He has no mutalisks, so he has to be very careful against the drop play of his opponent. That kind of was his demise in game number one already, so in game number two, of course. So he has to be careful that this is not going to backfire in this game for him either. Trying to put a little bit of pressure on those overlords there, uh, on those medivacs, and at the same time this base might be attacked. We have another dropship at the right side of the map. The Marga is starting to put in spines and spores for his defense and still chasing that medivac. Whereas there is no saturation for Yoda just yet at the third base, so still denied for a little bit longer and the hive tech is completed. Hive is completed and that might result in a plus three plus three upgrade for the Marga. Adrenal glance has been started, I like it a lot. And he needs those 3-3 three, three upgrades on the other hand. It would be great for him to get the upgrade advantage over his opponent to get ahead. Now with the Spore Crawlers, the draw play is not that scary anymore. He needs a Transfuse though. There's no Transfuse and one Queen is dead. Was busy just watching this army that was moving in right there. Yoda takes the lead in overall supply. But that is also, of course, against the high-tech units of the Marga. That's something that we definitely have to keep in mind there. That Yoda might be ahead in overall supply. But he is not starting 3-3 yet. He's just now about to complete his 2-2. And the Marga is already on the way to get the Ultralisk Cavern and Adrenal Glance. That means he will, for quite some time, have a very strong ground force in the game. With Cracklings and, of course, also Ultralisks on 3-3 upgrades and I guess Chaitin is plating as soon as the Ultralisk Cavern is done. So he has definitely a window of opportunity here. The Terran player might be ahead in overall supply, especially of course in army supply, but this is because Dimaga is not using his bank. He's instead just trying to build a huge bank that he can then use for units. We have even a few Vipers now being started for Blinding Clouds. He's just trying to buy time. And Yoda, I don't think he realizes that. Let me actually have a quick look what uh, Yoda saw. Yoda saw so far the hive tech, so he knows. He also, he kind of knows what's going on there, I feel. But he doesn't really move out and try to apply a lot of pressure. There are drops coming in. And the drop is moving in, but there are also a couple of zerklings. And the zerklings should help quite a bit. There might just not be enough on the other hand, but the upgrades are really, uh, there are two, two upgrades. So it might not be enough after all. Once again, the drop is heading over and Yoda really trying to make this work before the 3-3 three, three upgrades and also the Ultralist sound. Kaitina's plating has not been started on the other hand. That's a big problem for the Maga right now. It's an upgrade that he needs. That's extra armor and that is great against Marines, especially when they are on lower upgrades than the rest of your army. This time uh, the Medivac's not going down but at least being forced back and this is also of course true for those two but the question is for how long because Yoda is still looking for holes in the defense. He's still looking for opportunities. Kaitina's plating has been started. Cracklings are by now there so that helps a lot. The Maga with a really good economy, 74 against 60, four bases, saturated, not fully, but he definitely has the resources that he needs. Yoda is about to be maxed out, but the same is true for the Maga, and the big question is now, can the Maga go to town on that base, on that third, before we have three, three upgrades for the Terran player? That would be amazing for him. Ultralisks with absolute maxed out upgrades against two, two Marines are incredibly strong. The question is just, what about that minefield? Will the middle mines be taken out? Is he sending in the Zerglings to take them out? He needs to. Here come the Banelings, Ultralisks at the front. He needs to soak up that damage somehow. If he's able to do that, if the if the Vipers get good blinding clouds off, and here they go. We have once again, this is the bait. He's baiting the Widow Mine shots, and he's getting them. He's getting most of them. Uh, not all, but he's getting a lot. And here comes the rest. The blinding cloud is being used, and all those Marines in a really awkward position right now. The Maga is killing a whole lot army are there. Those Ultralists are absolutely going ham. Marines have no chance. They have blinding clouds everywhere in this game. Yoda is dropping to 120 supply. Is Dimaga really able to make that happen? GG! Dimaga takes the game and advances to the next round of the tournament. Incredible. Really good performance. Taking down the Korean player with a 2-1. Wow. Congratulations to Dimaga already. He needs to do a little bit more to qualify, but this was a major step in the right direction.